Hi, my name's Jennifer. Welcome to Jennifer Loves Books and welcome to my February wrap up. We're going to do it vlog style this month. So as of today, we're about a week and a half into February and I've read two books so far. Um, the first is The Doll Factory by Elizabeth McNeil. So I read this for my book club. Um, and this was actually a reread for me. I read this when it was first published a few years ago. It's historical fiction set in London in the 1850s and we follow Iris who works as a doll maker. Um, she encounters this uh, artist called Louis who convinces her to sit for him and in exchange he agrees to teach her how to paint. Um, so the book is sort of about their developing relationship but also in the background we have a character called Silas who works as a curiosity collector and he does taxidermy and other sort of things like that um, and he uh, becomes kind of infatuated with with Iris. Um, the book is quite gothic, quite dark, mysterious. I really enjoyed it. The first time around I probably enjoyed it a bit more than the second time around. I'm not sure why but I still really enjoyed it on the reread and I do need to read more by Elizabeth McNeil. And then the next book that I read is Consent by Leo Benedictus. You can't see the title because it is just like embossed on. Um, this was a random library pick and I'll read the blurb and you'll see why I picked it up. Um, so it says, this book is an experiment. We're experimenting together. You are part of the experiment if you'll agree to it. Normally, I don't let my subjects choose to be subjects. If you know you're being watched, you cease to be you. But I want you to read this. I wrote it for you. So that's the blurb. And it's also got a quote from Sophie Hanna, who is one of my favourite crime authors. And she says, a fascinating, disturbing and original thriller that erases the boundaries of the genre and draws challenging new ones. So, of course, I had to get out of the library when I read that. And I enjoyed this. So this is about a man who is a stalker. And we learn very early on that he is a stalker. Um, we follow him as he becomes increasingly obsessed with this woman. Um, it has quite an interesting narrative style. There are parts of it that are told sort of in the second person. So he is speaking to you as the reader and sort of trying to excuse his behaviour, trying to rationalise his behaviour. Um, it's quite dark, quite disturbing. It's the kind of thing that I really like because I really like unlikable, unreliable narrators. And this is what this is. Um, I think that, you know saying it's a original thriller that erases boundaries of the genre. I feel like that's overstating it a little bit. Like, I thought this was a good book and I really enjoyed it, but I'm not sure that it's doing anything terribly groundbreaking. Um, I imagine a lot of people might not get on with this and it does have a really low average rating on Storygraph. I think it's got like less than three stars uh, rating, although there's not that many reviews on there to be fair. Um, but this is the kind of book that I uh, really light, quite tight focused, quite dark about a, a horrible person, <laughs> really. So it's my kind of thing. Um, so that's all for right now. I am in the middle of three other books, unusually for me. I normally read one book at a time. Um, and surprisingly, we've reached the 10th of February and I have not DNF'd a book this month yet, which I feel like is kind of unheard of. But I'm sure before the end of the month, there's going to be at least one DNF. Okay, so it's a couple of days later and I have read a few more books and we have had our first DNF of the month. I knew it wouldn't take long. Um, it's The Murder Game by Tom Hindle. So this is a recently published book. I read A Fatal Crossing last year, which was Tom Hindle's debut novel. Um, and I thought that was okay at best. I thought I'd try this one because it sounds like my kind of thing. It's quite a classic um, set up of a murder mystery. A group of um, people go to a party at a house um, and it's a murder mystery party um, and obviously someone's going to die. I actually DNF'd it before we got to the murder because I was finding it a bit dull and I mean I'm sure it's a fine book but uh, there are just other books that I would rather read so I think this author is probably not going to be for me. 
Then I read The Shadow Friend by Alex North. This is a sort of crime thriller with horror elements. Um, our main character is called Paul and when Paul was a child, his uh, one of his friends was murdered by two of his other friends. And one of those friends then disappeared, vanished, no one knows what happened to them. Um, the story is told in two timelines, so we have Paul then as a child and Paul now. And in the present day, we have had a copycat murder take place. Um, and we also get a viewpoint from one of the police officers who is investigating in the present. I did enjoy this, but I felt like there was a mi the middle part of the book, there was a bit of a lull for me, but it picked up again towards the end. There was a moment in this book which, as I was reading it, I was like, wait, what? And I just sort of like sat there for a couple of minutes, like, what? One of those moments which I really, really liked. Um, so I did enjoy this. I think I probably didn't like it as much as The Whisper Man, which was Alex North's previous novel, but I do um, quite like his stuff. Um, I like sort of the horror elements that he brings into his, uh, his writing. Alex North has a new book coming out, which I can't remember what it's called, but I have it on order from the library. And then uh, two more books leaning into horror. I read What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. So this is a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe, which I have not read, but I would like to. This is my first time reading T. Kingfisher and I really, really enjoyed this. I thought it was great. I thought it was super creepy and gothic and intriguing. So our main character is called Alex and they are a retired soldier and they uh, receive news that one of their good friends, Madeline, is, uh, is seriously unwell. So Alex races to uh, go to see Madeline who is living in this big old house with her brother Roderick. Roderick. Um, and Roderick himself is not well either. He has previously, I think, been a soldier and he is suffering with um, the after effects of that emotionally and psychologically. Um, and creepy stuff starts happening in the house. Um, I don't want to say too much about the plot because it's very, very short. There is some kind of grotesqueness in here. Not overly so, but just like just the right amount. Um, and there is also some queerness in this book as well, which I thought was uh, very interesting. And then the final book for now, some more horror. This is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. So I have been meaning to read some Jeff Vandermeer for a while. And I liked this. This wasn't what I was expecting, actually. So this is the first book in the Southern Reach trilogy. And we have a, a group of people who are going on a mission into an area called Area X. And in Area X, there has been some sort of eco disaster. So the details are quite sparse and the people on the mission themselves don't entirely know what they are heading into. So there's four people on this mission, they're all women. Uh, we have a biologist, a psychologist, an anthropologist and a surveyor. And they are not given names. They are only referred to by those sort of job titles. And as part of their training, uh, before heading on the mission, they've been told to only refer to the others sort of by their job titles, if you like. They're only there um, for their role and for the individual skills that they can bring to the mission. So this is a pretty short book and very quickly stuff happens, it gets creepy, very intriguing. Um, the story is told from the point of view of the bio biologist. So it was interesting to have the sort of first person perspective. Um, the tension builds really well. There's lots of like just really weird stuff going on. I thought this was great. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I've already ordered the second book from the library, which is called Authority. And the third book in the trilogy called Acceptance, my library doesn't have a copy of, but I have submitted a purchase request, purchase suggestion. 
to them so hopefully they will approve that because it will be nice to uh, read the whole trilogy but yes I am very keen to read more by Jeff Vandermeer. Hello I've read a couple more books. First is We Do What We Do in the Dark by Michelle Hart. This is about a young woman called Mallory who is a college student and one day at the gym she uh, encounters this other woman who is much older than she is and who works as a professor at the college that she attends even though she is not Mallory's professor she doesn't actually teach her. Um, so this older woman who is not named she is just called the woman in the book um, is married um, and so they start an affair. Uh, the story is really about Mallory, I guess Mallory's coming of age, Mallory's relationship not only with the women, with the woman, but with other women, um, and also with uh, those in her family. I, I thought this was okay. I failed to connect with this, possibly in part because of the narrative voice. It's told in third person narration, and it's quite a distant third person narration. So you really are sort of being told the story of Mallory from a distance, if that makes sense. Um, and the other thing that probably um, was why I didn't like it that much was because it is pretty low on plot. Um, not much really happens. But I thought it was, like, it was fine. It was okay. Nothing special. Then I read Enduring Love by Ian McEwan, which was a wild ride of a book. So this was a buddy read with Nikki from Red Dot Reads. I'll link Nikki's channel down below. Um, so Enduring Love, where do I start? <laughs> Our main character is called Joe. And then um, one day he's gone for a picnic with his girlfriend, Clarissa. And they witness a hot air balloon uh, in the field nearby and a tragedy ensues. The first chapter which uh, encapsulates this sort of this, this tragic incident. The first chapter is one of the best first chapters I think I've read. So tense, so like action-packed. Um, what then follows is the impact of that day's events on Joe on his relationship with Clarissa. It's a story about obsession and trust and it's so action packed. So much happens which makes it hard to talk about because I don't want to give any spoilers. Um, there's a lot in there about where we wonder who we can trust, where we wonder who is uh, being unreliable and what they are telling us. There are some interesting shifts, sort of shifts in narrative voice um, and the way that the information is given to us as a reader, which I thought was interesting. Um, there are a lot of sort of long and overdone sections on like science and religion a little bit as well, which I thought I could maybe have, have done with slightly less of that but it did help to kind of build the tension, tension in a way because I was always keen to get back to the action. Overall for me I felt that I was slightly disappointed in the ending only I'm not entirely sure what ending I wanted but there were well there was one particular aspect of this book and sort of the plot which just makes me hesitate and it's something that I'm just not sure about. However, that said, um, I did really enjoy it. It's probably my favourite Ian McEwan that I've read and I've read several of his books. I do think he's an interesting writer. Clearly he's a very good writer. Um, and, you know, even though there are none of his books that I have sort of loved, I'm always intrigued to pick up his work because it always just, each book sounds interesting to me. Um, yeah, this is my favourite. My second favourite, I think, is On Chesil Beach. I am keen to read the film 
No, I'm not keen to read the film. I'm keen to watch the film of this <laughs> book. It's meant to be quite good, I think. Um, I'd be interested to see how they, how faithful they are to the book and how they sort of portray some of, some of what's in the book. Um, but yeah, this was like, this was a wild read. I really enjoyed the buddy read buddy reading experience with Nikki as well because it was interesting that we sort of picked up on different things and there were certain sort of aspects of the book and certain sort of characters that we each had had different um feelings towards um it was a really good book to buddy read actually there was a lot to talk about um and uh yeah it was it was good hello we are now at the end of February well almost at the end of February but I doubt I'm going to finish any more books before then in the last week I have read uh well I have completed no books but I have dnf'd four books um so <laughs> I'll show you what I've dnf'd it has been quite a busy week mostly in good ways um and I think I've just struggled to settle into anything Anyway, the first book is A Marvellous Light by Freya Mask. This is the first book in a trilogy, which I was keen to read because it's queer. So it's set in a sort of alternate historical period where some people have magical abilities. I read, I think I read over half of the book and it was fine. I don't read a lot of books with magic in and... The magic aspects of the book felt a bit dull to me like it was just I wanted a bit more intrigue I wanted a bit more plot the romantic element of the book was more interesting to me um, but that wasn't enough to keep me reading so I have DNF'd it I do already have the second book in the trilogy out from the library at the moment which is called A Restless Truth and I am still planning on reading this. This one features two women who are on an ocean liner and they are trying to solve a murder. So that sounds more my kind of thing. I don't know whether to take this back to the library and pick it up later on in the year because we're coming up to women's prize season. And I have well, quite a few library books up there that I'm not going to get to before the long list is announced. So I don't know, but I am still interested on reading this one. My next DNF was Everything Under by Daisy Johnson. So I read Daisy Johnson's book Sisters a couple of years ago and really, really liked it. Everything Under was shortlisted for the Booker Prize in 2018. I didn't read very much of this before DNFing. So it's about a, um, a mother-daughter relationship. Uh, they've been estranged. We have sort of it's told from a couple of different points in time. It's quite, um, what's the word? Sort of a bit odd, a bit like you're not quite sure what's going on. Um, I just didn't get on with the writing style really. Um, it has elements of Greek myth in there as well. Um, after DNFing it, I had to look on Storygraph to see what other people thought. And when I found out the way this book was going and the content that we were going to get in the book it was definitely a good idea to dnf it because the stuff that we do, that does happen in this book um is stuff that i don't want to read about uh personally um so yeah definitely not for me then a book that i read about half of before dnfing murder most unladylike by robin stevens this is the first in what is a I think middle grade series of mystery novels set in a girls school so we have two two of the girls have formed this sort of like detection society um, and one day one of them finds the dead body of one of their teachers in the gym at school um, and she runs off to get help to get another pupil and by the time they go back the body's disappeared um, and no one uh, believes that she saw this dead body because as far as they're concerned the teacher had resigned and left and so we have these two girls trying to investigate this crime and it was quite nice it was fine I, I don't I just sort of uh, lost interest in it this possibly may have been more to do with being in a bit of a funny mood at the moment um, because it you know it, it was quite pleasant um, but I did DNF 
Um, and then the final DNF is one that I DNF within a few pages, really, again, I mean, maybe I'll come back to it at some point, I don't know. My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. This is a sort of quite a well-beloved recent horror novel. Um, I read, well, <laughs> I DNF but read over half of The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones a couple of years ago. Um, so I was interested to pick this up because I thought that was a good book, even though I did end up DNF in it because I just found it a bit confusing. Um, and this is sort of a homage to slasher movies um, and uh, Final Girls. And I don't know if I'm just not in the mood or if it's just not going to be for me. I read about 20 pages and decided I wasn't terribly interested. Um, but last night I did pick up another book and I am very much enjoying it so far, even though I'm only 40 pages in. Um, it's The Other Side of Night by Adam Hamdy. So obviously uh, my full thoughts when I have finished the book, hopefully, will be in my next month's uh, wrap up. But I'm very pleased that I finally picked up a book that I'm getting on with. This is uh, quite uh, an intriguing book. It's sort of about a father-son. We have a retired detective. It's framed in quite an interesting way. And it's described as sort of being genre, genre defying, genre bending. So I'm intrigued. I have initial thoughts about the kind of thing this might be, but I'm probably way off. But I'm very much enjoying it. So those <laughs> that finishes um, my uh, February wrap up. I'm a bit of a downer with all the DNS, but that's fine. We move on. Um, as I say, Women's Prize is coming very, very soon. As you watch this, it's entirely possible the long list has already been announced. Um, and my plan for the Women's Prize is to probably try and read as many of the long list that I can get my hands on from the library. Um, as long as they are books that I am vaguely interested in, then I'll pick them up. Um, and of course, I'm happy to DNF if, if I don't get on with them. Um, so yeah, I might have to, I've gone a bit mad recently with my library ordering. I've got quite a lot of books out. I'm going to pick up six more this morning. Um, one or two of them are books that I'm thinking might be on the Women's Prize. So I thought I'd try and get them out before um, before there's a queue. I always imagine when, uh, <laughs> with the Women's Prize and the Booker Prize, when the long list is announced, I'm imagining everyone's gonna be sitting there waiting for the long list and then immediately ordering the books from the library. And that tends to actually not be the case um <laughs> there's normally not, not that many uh, cues for the books but some of the books who might, that might be on there that are cues for so I've got myself in the queue early um in case they are on the long list so anyway let's wrap this up I need to go to the library um I do hope you're well let me know what you've been reading in February let me know if you have thoughts on any of these books and let me know if you think any of those DNFs was a big mistake and I should pick them up again um and uh, I'll speak to you very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.